Can you believe it? Windows XP is 20 years old now. While initially criticized for its, quote, childish looking Luna theme, higher hardware requirements than its predecessors, and increased DRM measures, Windows XP would go on to become one of, if not THE best-selling piece of software ever. Today I'll be telling the story of Windows XP. In the late 1990s, initial development of what would become Windows XP was focused on two individual products, Odyssey, which was reportedly intended to succeed the future Windows 2000, and Neptune, which was reportedly a consumer-oriented operating system using the Windows NT architecture, succeeding the MS-DOS-based Windows 98. However, the projects proved to be too ambitious. In January 2000, shortly prior to the official release of Windows 2000, technology writer Paul Thura reported that Microsoft had shelved both Neptune and Odyssey in favor of a new product codenamed Whistler, named after Whistler, British Columbia. As many Microsoft employees skied at the Whistler Blackcomb Ski Resort, the goal of Whistler was to unify both the consumer and business-oriented Windows lines under a single Windows NT platform. Thorot stated that Neptune had become a black hole when all the features that were cut from Windows ME were simply re-tagged as Neptune features. And since Neptune and Odyssey would be based on the same code base anyway, it made sense to combine them into a single project. At PDC on July 13, 2000, Microsoft announced that Whistler would be released during the second half of 2001, and unveiled the first preview build, 2250, which featured an early implementation of Windows XP's visual style system and interface changes to Windows Explorer and the control panel. Microsoft released the first public beta of Whistler, build 2296, on October 31, 2000. Subsequent builds gradually introduced features that users of the released version of Windows XP would recognize, such as Internet Explorer 6.0, the Microsoft Product Activation System, and the Bliss desktop background. Whistler was officially unveiled during a media event on February 5, 2001, under the name Windows XP, where XP stands for Experience. In June 2001, Microsoft indicated that it was planning to, in conjunction with Intel and under PC makers, spend at least $1 billion on marketing and promoting Windows XP. The theme of the campaign, w Yes You Can, was designed to emphasize on the platform's overall capabilities. Microsoft had originally planned to use the slogan, Prepare to Fly, but it was replaced because of sensitivity issues in the wake of the September 11th attacks. On August 24, 2001, Windows XP Build 2600 was released to manufacturing. During a ceremonial event at Microsoft Redmond Campus, copies of the RTM build were given to, to representatives of several major PC manufacturers and briefcases, who then flew off on decorated helicopters. While PC manufacturers would be able to release devices running XP beginning on September 24, 2001, Windows XP was expected to reach general retail availability on October 25, 2001. On the same day, Microsoft also announced the final retail pricing of Windows XP's two main edition, Home, as a replacement for Windows ME for home users, and Professional, as a replacement for Windows 2000 for professional users. While retaining some similarities to previous versions, Windows XP's interface was overhauled with a new visual appearance, with an increased use of alpha compositing effects, drop shadows, and visual styles, which completely changed the appearance of the operating system. The number of effects enabled are determined by the operating system based on the computer's processing power, and can be enabled or disabled on a case-by-case -case basis. XP also added ClearType, a new subpixel rendering system designed to improve the appearance of fonts and liquid crystal displays. A new set of system icons was also introduced. The default wallpaper, Bliss, is a photo of a landscape in the Napa Valley outside Napa, California, with rolling green hills and a blue sky with stratocumulus and cirrus clouds. It's probably the most popular photograph ever taken. The start menu received its first major overhaul in XP, switching to a two-column layout with the ability to list, pin, and display frequently used applications, recently opened documents, and a traditional cascading all programs menu. The taskbar can now group windows opened by a single application into one taskbar button, with a pop-up menu listing the individual windows. The notification area also hides inactive icons by default, 
a common tasks list was added, and Windows Explorer sidebar was updated to use a new taskbar-based design with a list of common actions. The tasks displayed are contextually relevant to the type of content in a folder. Example, a folder with music displays offers to play all the files in this folder, or burn them to a CD. Fast user switching allows additional users to log into a Windows XP machine without existing users having to close their programs and logging out. Although only one user at a time can use the console, previous users can resume their session once they regain control of the console. Windows XP uses prefetching to improve startup and application launch times. It also became possible to revert the installation of an updated device driver, should the updated driver produce undesirable results. A copy protection system, known as Windows Product Activation, was introduced with Windows XP and its server counterpart, Windows Server 2003. All Windows licenses must be tied to a unique ID generated using the information from the computer hardware, transmitted either via the internet or telephone hotline. If Windows is not activated within 30 days of installation, the OS will cease to function until it is activated. Windows also periodically verifies the hardware to check for changes. If significant hardware changes are detected, the activation is voided and Windows must be reactivated. But let's be honest, you know how Microsoft is when it comes to DRM. Windows XP was originally bundled with Internet Explorer 6, Outlook Express 6, Windows Messenger, and MSN Explorer. New networking features were also added, including Internet Connection Firewall, Internet Connection Sharing Integration with UPnP, NAT Traversal APIs, Quality of Service Features, IPv6 and Terado Tunneling, Background Intelligent Transfer Service, Extended Fax Features, Network Bridging, Peer-to-peer -peer networking, support for most ESL modems, IEEE 802.11 connections, or Wi-Fi, with auto configuration and roaming, Tappy 3.1, and networking over Firewire. Remote assistance and remote desktop were also added, which allows users to connect to a computer running Windows XP from across a network or the internet and access their applications, files, printers, and devices, or request help. Improvements were also made to IntelliMirror features such as offline files, roaming user profiles, and folder redirection. Some of the programs and features that were part of previous versions of Windows did not make it to XP. Various MS-DOS commands available in its Windows 9X predecessor were removed, as were the POS6 and OS2 subsystems, and networking, NetBEUI, NWLink, and NetDDE were deprecated and not installed by default. Plug-and-play incompatible communication devices, like modems and network interface cards, were no longer supported. Surface Pack 2 and Surface Pack 3 also removed features from Windows XP, but to a less noticeable extent. For instance, support for TCP half-open connections was removed in Surface Pack 2, and the address bar on the taskbar was removed in Surface Pack 3. I'm not going over the additions in Surface Pack, as that's pretty boring in my opinion. On release, Windows XP received critical acclaim. CNET described the operating system as being worth the hype, considering the new interface to be spiffier and more intuitive than previous versions, but feeling that it may annoy experienced users with its hand-holding. XP's expanded multimedia support and CD burning functionality were also noted, along with its streamlining networking tools. The performance improvements of XP in comparison to 2000 and ME were also praised, along with its increased number of built-in device drivers in comparison to 2000. The software compatibility tools were also praised, although it was noted that some programs, particularly older MS-DOS software, may not work correctly on XP because of its differing architecture. They panned Windows XP's new licensing model and product activation system, considering it to be a slightly annoying roadblock that acknowledged Microsoft's intent for the changes. PC Magazine also provided similar praise, although noting that a number of its online features were designed to promote Microsoft-owned services, and aside from quicker boot times, XP's overall performance showed little difference over Windows 2000. Windows XP's default theme, Luna, was criticized by some users for its childish look, as I said before. Despite extended support for Windows XP ending in 2014, many users, including some enterprises, were reluctant to move away from an operating system they viewed as a stable known quantity despite the many security and functionality improvements in the subsequent releases of Windows. Windows XP's longevity was viewed as testament to its stability in Microsoft's successful attempts to keep it up to date, but also as an indicament of its direct successor's perceived failings.
On April 14, 2009, Windows XP exited mainstream support and entered the extended support phase. Microsoft continued to provide security updates every month for Windows XP. However, free technical support, warranty claims, and design changes were no longer being offered. At that time, however, over 75% of Windows computers in the world were still running XP, according to StatCounter. This was mainly due to the failure of Windows Vista, widely regarded as the worst operating system of all time. Many users refused to upgrade to Vista, but later that year, Microsoft would release this one shot at redemption, Windows 7. By 2012, Windows 7 would surpass XP in terms of market share. All good things must come to an end, though. Extended support ended on April 8, 2014, over 12 years after the release of Windows XP. Normally, Microsoft products have a support lifecycle of only 10 years. Beyond the final security updates released on April 8, no more security patches or support information are provided for XP free of charge. Critical patches will still be created and made available only to customers subscribing to a paid custom support plan. As it is a Windows component, all versions of Internet Explorer for XP also became unsupported. According to StatCounter, at the time Windows XP ended support, around 19% of Windows computers in the world were still using XP, the greatest for an out-of-support operating system at the time. Despite the approaching end of support, there were still notable holdouts that had not migrated past XP. Many users elected to remain on XP because of the poor reception of Windows Vista, as I mentioned before. Sales of newer PCs with newer versions of Windows declined because of the Great Recession and the effects of Vista, and deployments of new versions of Windows in enterprise environments require a large amount of planning, which includes testing applications for compatibility, especially those that are dependent on Internet Explorer 6, which is not compatible with newer versions of Windows. Major security software vendors, including Microsoft itself, plan to continue offering support and definitions for Windows XP past the end of support to varying extents, along with the developers of Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Opera web browsers. Despite these measures, critics similarly argued that users should eventually migrate from XP to a supported platform. The United States' Computer Emergency Readiness Team released an alert in March 2014 advising users of the impending end of support, and informing them that using XP after April 8 may prevent them from meeting US government information security requirements. Microsoft continued to provide security essentials virus definitions and updates for its malicious software removal tool for XP until July 14, 2015. As the end of the extended support approached, Microsoft began to increasingly urge XP customers to migrate to newer versions of Windows such as Windows 7 or 8, in the interest of security, suggesting that attackers could reverse engineer security patches for newer versions of Windows and use them to target equivalent vulnerabilities in XP. Windows XP is remotely exploitable by numerous security holes that were discovered after Microsoft stopped supporting it. Similarly, specialized devices that run XP, particularly medical devices, must have any revisions to their software, even security updates, for the underlying operating system, approved by relevant regulators before they can be released. For this reason, manufacturers often did not allow any updates to devices' operating systems, leaving them open to security exploits and malware. Despite the end of support for Windows XP, Microsoft has released three emergency security updates for the operating system to patch major security vulnerabilities. Most notably, the patch for that was released in May 2017 to address a vulnerability that was being leveraged by the WannaCry ransomware attack. I'm not quite done with my story, though. On September 23, 2020, source code for Windows XP with Service Pack 1 and Windows Server 2003 was leaked onto the image board 4chan by an unknown user. Anonymous users managed to compile the code, as well as a Twitter user who posted videos of the process on YouTube proving that the code was genuine. The videos were later removed on copyright grounds by Microsoft. The leak was incomplete as it was missing the winlog on source code and some other components. The original leak itself was spread using magnet links and torrent files whose payload originally included Server 2003 and XP source code, and which was later updated with additional files, among which were previous leaks of Microsoft products, its patents, media about conspiracy theories on Bill Gates by anti-vaccination movements, and an assortment of PDF files on different topics. Microsoft issued a statement stating that it was investigating the leaks. There, now I'm done with the story.
Thank you guys for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.